Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but as you'll also see at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is not only useful to the person who's asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now, today's question uh, has come via the Facebook page, and um, a chap called Mike Dobson uh, has sent in a very quick and simple question, and that is, what would be an archaeological definition of an ancestor? Uh, thanks for any help, and loving the vids on YouTube. So there you go, nice and straightforward there. And uh, well, that's a fairly interesting question, Mike, um, because on the one hand, um, the answer is very straightforward, and that is to say, well, it's the same as most definitions of an ancestor. But then actually, I was thinking about it, and, and there is there there are more uh, sort of caveats and nuances to that particular answer that I I was tempted to give you. Um, so I thought I'd make this video. And uh, well, first of all, yes, there is the conventional notion of an ancestor, quite literally someone who is related to you, usually in the past, uh, with whom these days we can establish p probably a genetic connection. That is, that is uh, a straightforward definition of what an ancestor is. Um, there is, however, the, I suppose, the conventional cultural idea of what an ancestor is, and that is someone from your family line, as it were. Often someone who shares the same name as you or who looks very similar to you. And I suppose this is where it does start to get quite interesting. We've already touched in previous videos on this channel, um, already touched on the idea that actually our ideas of ancestry are very um, very limited in terms of they, they serve a so social purpose. They enable us, for example, to claim land rights or claim property. Uh, they, they enable us to, to reach back into the past without blowing our minds in terms of the numbers of, of actual ancestors that we have. If we pare it down to maybe a, a family line, or one, not so much a family line, but rather a name line, then uh, we find it much easier to cope with. And uh, so I suppose that's, that's the more conventional social definition of an ancestor is someone who you can trace using a family tree. Um, but of course family trees aren't, uh, well, I, don't, I can't think of a single family tree that, that, that's, that's complete as it were. Uh, and also as well, after a certain number of, of separations, so once removed or, 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 uh, or cousins or whatever, people tend to, to start to dismiss their family tree. So actual ancestors get ignored when you use um, the, uh, that conventional uh, definition of ancestor. So I suppose the best definition of an ancestor from a modern perspective, a modern archaeological perspective, is, is anyone who is related to you. Um, and this is actually where it gets quite, quite weird and interesting because actually that technically means that, um, that we all share ancestors. Um, and this actually leads on to, I suppose, more of a, an archaeological, in terms of depth of time, perspective on, on ancestry. Um, because uh, not only do we uh, do we have that sense of of the, of, of the notion that, that, that eventually we're all essentially related back in the past, but also as well there is there are species ancestors. There are there are forebears to Homo sapiens. Uh, there are other species of Homo. There are um, uh, other um, species of, of of human, and then there are sort of pre-human creatures which could be counted as being ancestral um, or indeed are ancestral to 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 us so um, so that's yet another definition of ancestry ancestor or ancestry uh, using archaeology um, or at the very least an evolutionary anthropology and as you have to say it would be quite interesting if you were to go on ancestry.com or ancestry.co.uk uh, or any you know other one of those websites and you came up with you know like a marmoset <laughs> it's going hello i'm your ancestor from five million years ago um but unless that that's another um viable definition of ancestor from an archaeological perspective that said though from an archaeological or usually an evolutionary anthropological perspective um ancestors uh, are often creatures from whom we are working forward. So not so much uh, that we're working back towards them and then we're identifying them. Rather, 
they're they're found somewhere possibly in a canyon maybe in Africa or something and um, and we're trying to connect them to other animals uh, and often people will if they if they really want if they're really ambitious or really uh, really convinced that they're onto something they'll try and connect these creatures to the human lineage so or human lines human tree so in that sense of, often um, ancestors for an archaeologist are potential ancestors they are sort of things which may well link forwards in time to us as well um, so it's not uh, that said though they're not ancestors until they are connected so I am stretching the definition somewhat there but on that it is very standard practice for um, for people working in that particular section of archaeology to to think in those ways that almost as though um, for example I don't know Homo erectus is is a creature which is which is Pre, uh, pre homo sapien but also which is sort of on the way uh, in terms of the story of human beings and therefore it's, it was quite difficult not to think in that sort of reversed kind of timeline kind of way the idea that somehow you're trying to connect uh, the dots forward to modern day not so much just to human beings you know or rather to homo sapiens we're not you know some sort of pinnacle necessarily but the idea that, 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 that's, that, that that's part of the quest as it were for an archaeologist is, is a very real concept so those, I suppose, are some literal and archaeological definitions of ancestry and ancestors. Um, but there are, as well, and archaeologists and anthropologists will be well aware of this, there are, of course, important social definition, definitions of what an ancestor is. Um, a key one would simply be the ancestors those who came before now whether this is in a in a in a, a, a semi literal sense for example um uh, in uh, in the neolithic the idea of of uh, taking individuals and depositing them into a sort of a mass um, but very carefully sorted grave area where people sort of lose their identity and simply become one of the ancestors um, or whether it's it's part of a sort of I suppose a tradition of oral history so for example I'm thinking as most people would thinking of the dream time amongst Aboriginals in Australia um, this concept of the ancestors is is an important social concept which modern people tend to dismiss or tend not to think as in being important you go, oh yes that's that's nice yes that's all a bit airy fairy and you know fudgy it's all a bit like a, a mist we can't quite grasp that uh, but it is an important one because the, 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 this these ideas of the ancestors is something which um, which you can buy into as it were socially speaking so you can become accepted in a group by paying homage to the ancestors or by perhaps even burying someone from your family amongst the ancestors you become part of, of an area or part of a group and this is where ancestors and ancestry become social tools um, beyond simply land rights and beyond uh, ownership or even beyond having a name um, you can actually uh, manipulate the ancestors in the present in order to to create a new social reality um, so yeah so having the ancestors over there with no sort of um, uh, literal genetic or, or surname connection but rather a conceptual connection a, the um, a spiritual almost connection is very uh, very real but also very very useful uh, for, 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 for people um, connected with that is the idea of fratries spelt ph a R T, uh, no, no, P H R A T uh, R I E S. Spelling isn't my strong suit. Um, strong suit. But uh, no, fratries or brotherhoods, where people um, they have a, a perceived common ancestor, and that's enough to bind them together. The reality of that ancestor, as we might say, as as a modern person or a modern scientist or archaeologist might say, the reality of that ancestor is kind of irrelevant. What matters is what people now believe about their perceived ancestor. So the idea that these two people um, may uh, share, pool resources, share family members, share. Um, uh, um, uh, the access to certain places in the landscape or, or share trading rights uh, that is held together that bond is is held together by the idea that they have a perceived ancestor in the past and um, you might for example look uh, you know a very very well known example would be say Abraham uh, you know lots of people uh, today claim that they are linked to Abraham now sometimes these these connections to, to Abraham um, for example, uh, for religious purposes, do create friction because 
and again, fratries um, aren't the only type of groups who do claim common ancestry or common uh, lineage, uh, a common um, a common ancestor in someone. But it is on the, it's also been a useful tool over the centuries for certain groups to be able to say, well, we are we are essentially the same. We're from different parts of the world, or from, we're from different parts of the country, but we both have a common ancestor. And that, that that's, some, that's it is also a bond, a bonding factor. Um, so fratries and, and perceived ancestors is incredibly important. And um, there's also as well political forebears and it's worthwhile bearing in mind again this is a more cynical manipulation of those ancestors that I, that I was touching on when it comes to say the Neolithic and that is to say that there are people in the past who I mean people now who who will claim a lineage they will claim for example um, uh, Norman um, William the Conqueror the Norman the Norman King William the Bastard as he was known um, he very deliberately claimed that he was of Viking royalty, a Viking lineage. Now the Normans, the Northmen, who did come into northern France and settle, were undeniably had a, had a, had a Scandinavian Viking travelling fighting background. Um, but this, this lineage, uh, for some, is questionable. People sort of go... Um, but for him it was crucial because it helped to, 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 to connect him with the English crown and therefore become you know, the first, for many people, the first king of, of what would become uh, in modern England. So uh, a political forebear, or the need to hold on to an ancestor or ancestral lineage for political reasons, and arguably all of these reasons that I've been talking about are political, but these ones are much more cynically political. Um, uh, it is also, again, another definition of ancestor, another way that we can think about these things. Um, for example, in Rome, you know, in, in ancient Rome it was, it was not uncommon for people to adopt um, grown men who aren't related to them, but because of that, that act of adoption, they uh, they they allow th this man to buy into their lineage and their fathers and their their legitimacy. Um, I suppose the most famous example would be uh, Caesar Augustus himself, who was adopted by um, Gaius Julius Caesar. And while they were nephew and uncle already, um, the the point was that he suddenly he he could he could now um, claim Gaius Julius Caesar Caesar the first, as it were, as his father and also claim him to be a demigod so yeah again it's a very literal a very obvious a very cynical um some might say a uh, use of the ancestors in a political sense so i suppose the point is that more often than not the term ancestor and ancestors is almost meaningless in so much as um, it's, it's often describing a projection of the present onto the past. It's describing, um, it's describing and legitimizing the, the present using and appealing to the past. Um, that's often how the word ancestor and ancestors is applied and used. And even in the modern world, people will say, well, I am, I am, I am, a, you know, I am of Welsh extraction. I am a Welsh man. Um, when when the reality is much more complicated than that and while their ancestors their genetic ancestors may well come from all over the place and some of them come from wales some of them come from england some of them come from 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 scandinavia some from spain some from so on and so forth um the 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 the, the projection onto the past of being welsh mm, um is is a powerful one uh, or being you know whatever it is that, that one wants to be so in some ways it, it we we have to accept that it, it can be an almost meaningless term because it's very hard to grasp these numbers the literal numbers of ancestors that we all have but even though it is it is often a sort of almost meaningless term it is very clear just through this conversation that we've had this morning um that the term ancestry is often everything to many people it is quite literally what makes them them um, and whether we're talking about genetic ancestors or perceived common ancestors or a, a being adopted into a into a proud line or a proud um uh, a proud uh, um sort of inheritance of, of rights and power um, it is everything to the person who is claiming it um, and therefore it's, it's simultaneously powerful and um, and also I would say dangerous in so much as it can be used to to legitimize and and, and twist modern realities um, but by appealing to the past but that's always been what people do
So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, Mike, this has been an interesting and useful answer to your question. Um, a literal archaeological definition, or indeed general definition of what an ancestor is, is someone um, or something, you know, a creature even, which is then directly genetically related to you, usually in the past. That is what an ancestor quite literally is. But the word ancestor and ancestry um, very quickly becomes a political uh, tool and a politically laden, uh, politically um, weighted term and, a, and also a politically uh, important concept. And that's something which archaeologists and anthropologists simply cannot ignore. It's something which we come, uh, we literally quite literally butt heads with every single time we start to look at past cultures because their concept of their ancestry feeds directly into who they are and what they are and how they express themselves in whatever time they are living and that applies to us and it also applies to the you know, to the vikings it applied to uh it to um to uh you know to iron age france the idea of people before them um has always been or before us has always been one of the defining things that, that helps us to express now what makes us us and what makes us different and distinct from maybe another group of people who come along and go you explain why you are different from us or rather you know explain your your right to exist <laughs> and um and that's what we do we tend to appeal to ancestors and ancestry to do that so as i say hopefully it's been an interesting uh answer and it's been quite an interesting thing to think about and um there you go uh probably a slightly longer answer than you were hoping for mike but i simply couldn't just leave it at a simple definition i had to had to go into this all the way i had to commit um nonetheless thank you so much for asking the question and hopefully uh, other people out there will have something interesting to add to this discussion so please do comment below if you have any thoughts or ideas and um well i look forward to reading them as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.